Oh, welcome to my first battle report. This is an anonymous poster. I don't know if these are going to be all that frequent, but I just wanted to give it a shot to see what it's like to make my first battle report. Um, so this 2,500 point battle, blood and glory, what else versus vampire counts. Um, as I said, this is blood and, court, blood and glory, um, what else out of a 42 to 7, and the vampire counts had a 42 to 6. Uh, we'll see where that fortitude is placed and how um, uh, placement took place during um, deployment in the next slide. This, well, not the next slide. Uh, we just have our, our lines here demarking where the deployment zones are. Um, so the spells for the Wood Elves on my level 4 uh, spell singer, uh, spell weaver, uh, Final Transmutation, Enchanted Blades of Albion, Plague of Rust, and Searing Doom. Uh, we'll see how well these spells uh, panned out. Uh, I had a... we'll see in the deployment, once I get to deployment, we'll see that I had some Sisters of the Thorn. Uh, they have, by default, the Shield of Thorns and Curse Anor here. And then my level 2 uh, spell singer. I uh, had the flaming, fulminating flame cage and flaming sword of ruin. Okay, so uh, starting with the wood elf deployment, I will be going over deployment for both simultaneously. Um, on the far left here, on the far left flank, we have a great eagle, followed by um, twelve wild riders, each of uh, having shields. Next, we have a spell singer of level 4 on a Great Eagle. We have two groups of five Sisters of the Thorn, and um, actually the, the spell singer is next to those the sisters, and we have a BSB on a Great Eagle behind the um, Wild Riders. The goal there is to uh, really kind of prevent against fren uh, frenzy baiting and to allow me to move freely. Um, on his left flank, or his right flank, my left, he has a bus of 50 skeletons with shield and spear, and in the in my right hand corner is a, a banshee. He has one terror guys, he has five hounds. Uh, behind the building he has a bus of 14 uh, black knights, and in there is his vampire lord, also a level 4. To the right of that there are 50 zombies, then his mortis engine. Behind his mortis engine is a bunker which has a level 1 necro in it, uh, which are uh, grave guard. Um, so that's the left flank, and then the next slide we have for him five more dire wolves. I have a unit of uh, 10 glade riders, with the hagbane tips, the, the poisoned arrows, and in there is my level two spell weaver. I have another and another great eagle, and then my scouts to prevent him from really wanting to vanguard. I put um, ten way watchers. Um, so next slide, uh, and here we can see that in re in ready for ambush, I have uh, ten more glade guard. Um, one having True Flight arrows and the other one having Arcane Bodkins. Okay, Vampire Counts turn 1. So you can kind of disregard the comments at the top. They're just my notes and uh, I didn't really want to... I didn't really have any notes taken so I just put the slides together with notes. You can ignore the notes if you want or you can look at them. Um, so VC turn 1, he attempts to charge his hounds, that was the only charge he declared, and I went ahead and just shot them right off the board uh, as a sand and shoot reaction. Uh, and then the movement on his left flank basically consisted of pushing his skeletons up along with the wolves and uh, moving his knights up behind the building, kind of trying to prepare for whatever charge he wanted since they are treated uh, all train as normal train since they are ethereal for the purpose of movement. Uh, he moved his zombies up. Uh, at this point he kind of moved his zombies up in a way that was uh, really prevented him from wheeling and so you'll see how that pans out in the next couple of slides. 
And then movement on his right flank basically consisted of just pushing up the mortise engine and fall behind by his bunker. Um, so going into the casting phase, Vampire Count's got 12 dice, and uh, what else were left with 7? Uh, got one channel. Uh, you can see here he cast the Gaze of Nagash from his Vampire Lord onto my Wild Riders, killing five of them. Uh, I could have dispelled this, and I also had the ability to add the, the, the dice equal to the amount casted by the caster, and I never ended up using that. I could have saved the life of five Wild Riders had I used that. Um, on the right, he just moved his zombies up using uh, Van Hale's Dance Macabre to uh, kind of put pressure on my uh, highly mobile army. Uh, and that was the end of his turn. So it, what else turn? Uh, basically I split and try to get out of his charge arc and as far away from him as possible, just trying to sh shoot as many arrows and cast as many spells as possible to, um, to score points. Uh, currently, I don't really have any strategy here, just trying to avoid and uh, try to cut down on his fortitude as much as possible. Uh, and on the left flank, you can see that I moved the Wild Riders and my BSB to the left after passing my Frenzy Test, and also used Smooth the Great Eagle up to maybe try to bait him into charging so I could get the uh, Wild Riders around uh, safely. Uh, what else? Magic phase. It was six to four dice. Um, ended up getting the Enchanted Blades of Albion, with Avion, which basically gave me plus one to hit. Um, not having true flight arrows, I wanted to guarantee that I was hitting on at least threes. We'll see what that does for me. I go ahead and shoot at the Mortis engine. Um, and get the, don't do any. Uh, next, my um, Way Watchers open up on the uh, Grave Guard, killing off only one. And so that's Vampire Count's turn two. Okay, so for Vampire Count's turns two, he really kind of puts the pressure on, flies that Terror Geist up into the in, up into the middle, uh, pivots his Night Bus to work on my right flank and tries to trap the Wild Riders with the Skeletons, which you'll see later on that uh, he totally fails, uh, Fast Cavalry being uh, able to maneuver around his slow-moving troops. Uh, on his right flank, he go ahead, goes ahead and fails a swift reform on his uh, Grave Guard, um, so he's just able to uh, reform, and uh, his Mortis engine stays still, um, just trying to give regen to the rest of his troops. Uh, Vampire Counts Magic Phase number two, I believe. If this is turn two, he gets uh, seven dice. So what else get five? Um, he goes ahead and doesn't do much with his Magic Phase, but he's able to scream off in the shooting phase one of my eagles. Um, that might have been out of sequence. I think maybe I got the pictures mixed up. Oh no, he for he forgot to do this during the magic phase. He forgot to move his zombies. He had gotten the spell off during the magic phase and and uh, Van Hells them against again to kind of put pressure on my uh, fast calf. Uh, so what else turn to? Uh, my ten glade riders with the ambush come in behind his his lines um, to attempt to pick off some of the Glaive Guard. And the other ten Glade Riders come on with uh, the hopes of being able to uh, shoot down the Terror Geist. So in, in movement, I go ahead and move my Hagbane tipped arrow uh, Glade Riders up to assist in taking out the Terror Geist, uh, which is a big mistake because if you see around the corner, his Black Knights can see um, that bunker with my level 2 and uh, wasn't a smart move. I also moved my level 4 up to be able to try to cast something to assist those Glade Riders or perhaps Final Transmutation, the uh, Tear Geist. So in on my left flank you can see that uh, 
I kind of move the wild riders up to get out of the charge arc of the skeletons, keeping the BSB with them to prevent the frenzy baiting. Uh, that's just another picture of the left flank. Uh, magic, uh, six dice to five dice, six for the wood elves and five for the vampires. Um, nothing really happens in the magic phase, so we move on to shooting, and I get, with the hagbang tips, I get two wounds through, but he regens them off like a champ. Um, and I'm only between the Way Watchers and the ten uh, Arcane Bodkins arrows coming from the Glade Riders. I am only able to kill off four uh, Grave Guard. And I move my but move my eagle up to try to redirect and prevent that uh, Mortis Engine from slamming into my my general or into the uh, sisters. Uh, the sisters throw their javelins. And we go on to Vampire Count's turn. So on his right flank, he does what I said he was going to do. He charges his Black Knight bus at my my bunker. Um, I lose two, so I choose to flee as my reaction, and I lose two going through his zombies. Um, and then his Black Knight bus decides to redirect into my general, and because I was so close to the edge of the board, I stood. And we'll see what happens here in a little bit to her. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the zombies ch uh, chase the Glade Riders off the board and then attempt to redirect into the sisters who flee, so it's a fail charge or a double flee. As a it's a fail charge as a result of a double flee. <coughs> and on the left flank, he uh, reforms, fails to swift reform his skeletons because his general is so far away and. Um, moves the Terrorgeist up to try to scream at at some at the sisters or something. Uh, notice he's taken a wound from from shooting. So on the right flank, that's that's all the movement that happened there. He's kind of putting some pressure on my way watchers by moving his uh, grave guard up. Okay, so this is kind of normal for the magic phase in this game. The vampire counts get a lot more spell dice than uh, what else get this spell dice. However, that ends up being the downfall of the vampires. Uh, his vampire lord, in an attempt to heal the terrorgeist, um, rolls a miscast on only three dice and ends up <coughs> rolling a four which is Dimensional Cascade. Not only killing one, two, three, four, five, seven Black Knights, but also sucking the Vampire into the warp after failing his ward save, leaving only about eight Knights remaining. Uh, there's the dead pile after Crumble as a result of the miscast. And the one wound he tried to heal back on the Terrorgeist results in him taking four wounds from the crumble on the Terrorgeist. Um, <coughs> and after crumble, that only leaves uh, three knights remaining uh, in the, um, to attack my sorceress. Um, and in that combat that just proceeded, uh, he only managed to do... Um, I think he managed to do one wound and broke me um, as a result of the charge and a wound. Um, going on to what else? Turn three. On the left flank, you can see I move things up in preparation to shoot the tear ice off the board. <coughs> uh, wild riders kind of move around. They didn't do much this game besides just dance around his slow moving infantry. Um, and then on the right flank, uh, the, the sorceress does rally. Um, so you can see that the, the flea from the Black Knights, she, yeah, she didn't take a wound passing through the zombies. <coughs> so she does manage to rally, and also the sisters on the right manage to rally. I hold my ground with the Way Watchers, and just kind of prepare to shoot those Grave Guard again, who have managed. I think that he managed to raise a couple back. Um, in terms of what else, casting dice, it is uh, eight dice to five dispel dice. 
<coughs> um, nothing really happens in the um, magic phase except for um, uh, in the shooting phase I'm able to take my true flight arrows mixed with my um, yeah just mix just the arrows from the true flight uh, glade riders managed to kill the remaining take the remaining two wounds off the terrorized and uh, I'm still kind of plucking away at those um, those uh, grave guard okay turn four for the vampire counts uh, uh, in, in this slide, I just kind of show this because my uh, opponent decided to charge the Way Watchers, and I told him, I said, you know, I'm just going to allocate as many attacks as I can on your Necro. That's your last cast vampire uh, lore caster, and if I kill him, you're going to start crumbling. So I allowed him to take back his move. Then on the next turn, um, or his charges, he charges the. Um, Lord with his zombie unit, and uh, I think that was his only charge. And oh, he did, he had a failed charge with the schools on my wild riders. Oh, and another charge on my eagle, so I managed to run away from his mortis engine. <coughs> he has five dice to th three. Nothing happens in that magic phase, so what else? Turn four. Um, I charge his ghouls. We'll see that this doesn't really even get to this point because at this point in the game he only has one more fortitude left before he uh, hits his breaking point and loses the game. Um, knowing this I decide to circle the one unit that would give me the fortitude I need and I put all my shots into the remaining uh, black knights and I am able to kill them, and that's a victory for the Wood Elves. We didn't sum up the points, um, it, it just because it's blood and glory, and it says if you uh, manage to take his forward or two down to the breaking point, then then you, then you win. Um, so it is a victory for the Wood Elves. Uh, it's my first battle report. Some of the pictures are sideways. I'm not sure how this is going to sound, but I just figured I'd give it a shot. Um, so I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Bye.